So we're back in the centre of the ground here in the Telstra Stores Moyt and Rosebud match of the round. We're just starting the second quarter, uh, the third quarter here, the second half of football. And uh, good wrap there by the boys at half time as Man Lies are going to attack for the first time. Andrew Withers could have uh, given away a free kick for holding the man there. Good play there by Sinkowitz. He needs some support. Jaden Gross overran it. Jesus allowed his teammate, uh, his opposition player, to get it. He was good to go back after the footy, though. Dives on top of it. They dive on top of him. Andrew Withers goes in there, and eventually the umpire will come in and bounce. Not happy with himself, Jaden Gross. No, he wouldn't be there, mate. He, um, yeah, he just obviously fell over a crucial moment. So, uh, good tap there. Great kick out of defence, but only uh, momentarily goes straight down the throat of the Ruckman there. Gives it off nicely to Heasley. Inside 50. Ricky Johnson versus Van Oonen Johnson. He got one. He got dealt with after he got rid of the footy there. That was from Darren Booth. Goes to the centre of the ground. They got the numbers there. That's done. Done a little handball off. Was good to Little. Little comes out towards Booth on the member's wing. Plays on immediately. Kicks the ball inside 50. Comes out. Lockwood takes the mark. Good start by Man Eliza. So they've come out refreshed the Mounties. They've got the ability to turn a game in a heartbeat. And this man is a very hard man to stop when he's out in front on the lead. Scott Lockwood. And this at the two-minute mark of the third quarter, an opportunity to put the red legs back in front. He's about 30 metres out. Lovely kick off the boot. The umpire didn't move a muscle. No. He didn't move a muscle standing at the goalpost. So uh, through for a minor score. It looked home from here. Bit of an understatement, but they really needed that goal, didn't they? Especially after their second quarter. And, you know, their coach, coaches would have given them a little bit of a bake in there, a few things to... to um, to iron out, but they really needed that to just kickstart their second half. So Luke Charger, Churcher to bring the ball back into play. Does so now for the Kangaroos. Goes to the outer side of the ground. Good play there by the big fella in Norton. Comes down to Parker. He'll want to get out onto that left foot. He does now. Cross the face of goal to centre half back. And Dylan Luxer takes the mark for the Kangaroos. He's got Blake Harkness out wide. He's got under their guard this afternoon, Harkness. He's got the footy now on the outer wing position. Wants to go square the ball up again. He does so. Goes in short, looking for and finding his teammate who's got the ball, kicks it up towards the centre of the ground, but going back and Little takes an easy mark, gives it off to Dunn. Dunn's got the ball now through the centre, comes out wide looking for Jimmy Clayton, takes an easy mark on the member's wing. Right foot kick up towards half forward, couple to beat. She probably should have punched instead of going for the mark and allowed Nathan Ryan to chip in. He gives a little handball, another one goes back to him. Willett's got the footy now. Dave Willett, right foot, snap, goal! Too cute there, Kangaroos. Mount Eliza pounced and made them pay. They move on to five goals, 8.38. Back in front, Lang Warren, 4.9.33. Good finish, wasn't it? So, uh, you know, Lang Warren, I like the fact that they were trying to retain the footy, but, you know, if you're going to send it further up the ground if you, to a, a contest, get some length on it. Get some length on it. Don't just turn it over midfield. And, you know, Mount Eliza are actually able to just rebound that footy, get it forward and um, hit the scoreboard. So we're back in the centre again. It was wonderful play there from, that's Ryan Smythe, who's wearing number 12 out there too, boys, if we're confused about who that is. Ominous signs too. Four inside 50s inside the first four, but it's this quarter and Langlorn haven't registered one yet. Definitely the scoring end, Vossi, no doubt about that, as Matthew Norton wins the tap, but uh, there they are at the fall of the ball. Again, Rowan Heasley wrapped up by Michael Parker, and the umpire will come in and bounce again. <laughs> up they go. Little tried to get the... Uh, the advantage, but good work there again from Norton. Jeez, could have got pushed in the back there. Shane Patterson dived forward. His opponent went with him, but the umpire said, no, give the footy back to me. Look at the amount of numbers Man Eliza have on the defensive side of this stoppage here. So Four Patterson goes for the footy again. Good work there. Uh, somehow got his kick to the footy. Goes up towards half forward. Lockwood came screaming out. Benny Lean attacks the footy hard. Going in there is Willett. Almost going through the footy there was Sam Wetnall. Couldn't go. Comes out to Lean now. He'll want the left. Blake Harkness just gets a little tap over. Parker's got to try and pick the ball up. He does so now. Needs some support. Goes out wide to Churcher. Still inside defensive 50. Lang Warren. Man lies as def uh, the forward defence there was fantastic to lock the ball in and the ball eventually dribbles over the line out of bounds still 60 metres around for the Mounties goal certainly got some real intensity about a man Eliza have started this quarter in absolute flurry so looking to atone for a poor second quarter so the ball comes back into play again Matt right, Norton right. taps the ball towards the boundary line again fumbly Lang Warren at the uh, below their knees and Michael Parker sees the ball over the line out of bounds 
So they're just working it uh, further outside of their defensive 50 Langwine. Little versus Norton. Norton went for the second tap. Heasley pulled him off the 40. He didn't have it. Michael Parker goes in. He's wrapped up and eventually the umpire will come in and bounce. Has the wind picked up a bit, guys, or not? Yeah, I reckon it has. Uh, those trees on the outer side of the ground, yeah, there's a fair bit, uh, fair bit going through there, no doubt about it, as Norton wins the tap again, he's won most of them, Parker at the fall of the ball, he's wrapped up once again, great attack on the footy there, was wet and all, he's been terrific in... Uh, in Tough stoppage, it's going to be a hot stoppage here, they'll need to, uh, they need to defend well here, Lang Warren. So they need to clear the ball out, third man up this time, that was good play, comes down there towards Willett, he gives the ball out, comes to Landry, left foot shot at goal. That's a lovely looking kick off the boot, but it was just a bit lean. Trying to score, so they move on to five goals, nine, 39, six points in front now, the Red Legs. Lang Warren, four goals, nine, 33. That's on the Rye Hotel scoreboard. Gone nearly six. Ball comes in from Luke Churcher on this occasion. The ball's going to drop short. Good play there from Norton again. Ethan Raleigh just taps the ball forward. Blake Hartz gave it to Withers. Withers goes out long towards uh, Jared Amelfi, who now finds himself in the forward line, but Darren Booth clears the ball. Blake a stick fat. Just stick together and try and uh, get siege from Manalizer. So we're on the outer wing position. The two Ruckman doing battle again. Matt Norton versus Matt Little. Norton wins this one. Could have got a push in the back. Parker wants the, uh, yeah, there was there. And Shane Patterson, who's done a lot of good work down there, gets the free kick. Gave it to uh, Gross, who's having a stinker this afternoon. He wraps up the tackle, but uh, he struggled this afternoon. How many for him? Vossi? Only the four. Four possessions uh, for Jaden Gross this afternoon. Certainly be looking for him to have a big second half. Needs two as the ball hits the deck. Plenty of numbers around the footy. Shane Patterson goes in hard. Little, he'll go straight up in the ruck versus Norton. Norton just charged through him. Ethan Raleigh's got to attack the footy. Going hard at there was a Melfi, but he couldn't. Uh, pick the footy up, goes up there towards Smythe, good play there by, uh, is that um, can't pick up that He's, somebody down there wants a free kick I reckon it might be Willard, is it getting up off the ground now yet, yeah, Dave Willard it is appealing for a free kick for holding the man he probably uh, had some claims to that as Norton taps the ball out, comes down towards Parker again, holding the footy, dropped it like a hot scone. The umpire let him get away with it. Lean gives it off to Willett. Willett kicks it inside 50 now. Johnson versus Van Oonen. Good play there by Van Oonen to hold, to, to hold off his opponent there as the ball comes out towards defensive 50 again. Dave Barton tried to get a handball out. Comes out now towards Smythe. Smythe kicks the ball up towards the wing position. Overrunning it there was Herdman. Jared Amalfi picks it up on the outer side. Kicks it up the line there towards Patterson, who took the mark. Ethan Rowley through the middle of the grounds, calling a terrible kick there. Moving forward, and the ball comes out. Oh, it's ping pong. It's gone straight back to Shane Patterson. So it was uh, Groundhog Day then. Wow, he got the footy back, lucky him. They're having a mulligan, Shane Patterson, Tully. They were, they were waxing as the ball goes up towards half forward. Could have done better in that contest there. Hanger just allowed his opponent to take the mark. Jimmy Clayton, he's got Dave Willard on the members' wing. Willard takes the mark, usually likes to kick. This time he handballs to Lean. Lean lets a few run past him. Gets onto that favoured left foot. Kicks it up there towards Van Unen. Coming out is Ricky Johnson for the ball. Good play there by the Mounties. Equally good play there by the Lang Warren defence comes out towards Johnson. Eames has got the footy now. Half back line. Doggy Withers gets it. Gives it to Peach who's under pressure. Kicks the ball up the line to Sinkowitz. He's got a couple to beat and terrific pressure there from both sides. Good defence there from Lang Ryan. Obviously led by Ricky Johnson. He's just a pillar down there but um, good play. Got the footy outside 50 up to a stoppage back to a 50-50. Eight inside to one. Eight inside 50s to one this quarter boys. Ten minutes gone in the a third quarter. Lang Warren needs to kick a goal. Gives it out to Smythe. Kicks it up the line, looking for Hanger. Comes out, almost took the mark. Herdman for the ball. Flying shot for goals, going to bounce through. It does. Touched. Touched. Hangers through on for the a deck minor too. score. So Corey Hanger, the first game up, hits the deck. Might have got one in the Jets, I reckon. 
Coming out to uh, lead for that ball. Four goals, 10-34. Lang Warren, Mount Eliza lead, 5-9-39. That is on the Rye Hotel the scoreboard. He, young fella, got a good attack on the ball. He has, as the ball comes kicked out, and it's gone straight down the throat of Herdman. He wants to go short, he does now. Not a great kick to Peach. Oh, oh he got poleaxed in that contest. I'm not sure there was much in it. But uh, frontal contact, I suspect, saw him get the free kick, Brent Clinic. Yeah, I think so, mate. Look, he needs to go back and kick this. It's a really against the grain. Mount Eliza have done all the attacking this quarter, and rightly so. They had a poor second quarter. Needs to kick this as a little bit of a steady, and just to blow the wind out of Mount Eliza's sails a little bit. They're really coming. So, Blake Peach, who was a late inclusion in this side this Been afternoon. He has. A lot of forward pressure. That's what the coach wanted before the game. He'll kick from about 45 metres out. Not a great angle. It's an up and under kick. It wasn't his best effort. And it goes through for a minor score. So we've played almost uh, 11 and a half minutes into the second quarter. Back to five points, the difference. The ball comes. Boots in now. Darren Booth's got the footy. Members side, forward, uh, back pocket. Jared Brown start, stands the mark. Darren Booth kicks the ball up the line. Looking for Strickland. The ball goes over the back. Great play there by Lean. Just allows the ball to go through. Picking up there was Nathan Ryan. Great play. He had to mark it. And that was Nick Hamill and he took the mark. Wants to go back to Ricky Johnson who's a good user of the footy usually. This time he just sold some candy. Goes in the centre of the ground. Wasn't a great kick. Dunn took the mark. Uh, Dunn took the ball. Great pressure there by Luxor though. Kicked the ball forward. Got a couple to beat down there. He's hanger. Good play to Razio. Just knocked him off the footy. Bullock's got to go. Needs some support. Got it there from Gill. Gill takes two bounces. Runs to the defensive 50 out of side. Kicks it up there towards half back. The ball didn't sit for Amalfi. Allowed Booth to punch the ball forward. Comes out to him now. Left foot kick up towards the forward line. Scotty Lockwood comes out. He's got time to gather. Picks it up at half forward now and goes inside. Van Unen versus Johnson. Johnson just nudged him under the footy. Was good play. Rebounded beautifully. Tucked the footy under the arm. Goes towards the centre of the ground. But a not a great kick again and Capkin took the mark. Gave it off to Jimmy Clayton and Rowan Heasley ends up with it on 50 for Mount Eliza. What a transition of play there. You know, great defence by Lang Warren, but just let themselves down with that exit kick again. Turn the footy over and just another repeat entry for Mount Eliza. So Heasley's got the footy. Launches it from 50. That's a monster kick. Has it got the journey? It has. Great kick there from Robert Rowan Heasley. Kicks the goal and extends Mount Eliza's lead. Six goals, 9.45. They now lead by 10 points on the Rye Hotel scoreboard. Four goals, 11.35. You're listening to RPP, the voice of Peninsula football. Our sponsor, the Rye Hotel and Best Western 14 Nelson, are proud to be servicing the Rye community. The Rye Hotel's been around for 80 years and is renowned for their good old-fashioned service and hospitality. Best Western 14 Nelson luxury accommodation and conferencing offer 30 stylish suites with modern lounges and living spa bathrooms with contemporary furnishings and fabrics. Come and try our new menu. Function facilities available. Phone 5985-2277 or visit the Rye Hotel at 2415 Point Lapian Road, Rye. And we're back here in the action. Langwater just got to hang on here now. There's 13 and a half minutes played. Andrew Withers just a little bit too cute with the ball coming out of the forward, out of the defence. Allowed man Eliza, Capkin again. They're going to have to keep an eye on this bloke. He's going into the ruck and causing some problems. And he kicks the ball inside. An easy mark taken there. And I reckon that might be Dave Barton. Just getting a little bit more creative, Mount Eliza, which is good to see. They're looking lower in their eyes and not always going to Van Ewan. So a lot of the Lang Warren defences, defensive uh, acts are always sort of focused around Van Ewan, but the, the shorter options are getting used a little bit here. So Dave Barton's been terrific this afternoon for the Red Legs. This to extend the margin to 16 points. As Rowan Heasley comes off the ground for a well-earned rest. A lovely looking kick off the boot. Through for a minor score, though. He got the journey. But through for a minor score. So six goals, a 10, a 46. Mount Eliza leading Lang Warren, four goals, 11, 35. 11 points the difference, Land them off the hook. Yeah, absolutely. They're just all over them at the moment, Mount Eliza. So Lang Warren need to get this footy up the other end and just build some pressure just for some repeat entries or obviously kick a goal. So Ricky Johnson kicks the ball inside. It was a short kick, but he found his teammate there in Withers. So Andrew Withers has got the footy now. 
Outer side of the ground, goes up the line to the wing. Few to beat there, Jared Brown. He was good at ground level, though. He wants somebody running past at Sinkowitz. He goes up the line. The ball holds up in the wind. There's no doubt that the uh, advantage is to, to the members' end of the ground here as the ball just held up in the wind. Yeah, absolutely, mate. It's um, like we keep saying, you know, Langwaran have just got to start generating something. You know, they're, they're forward to centre now, but they need to just get some score off this um, off this stoppage. A little bit more run and carry, I reckon, Brent, as the ball comes back into play again. Good play by Luke O'Neill, but there's Mandalizer with all the numbers over the around the footy again. Good tackle there. Willett was able to give the ball out. The umpires found a free kick. It's for a throw against Dave Willett. And Andrew Withers will take the free kick in the middle of the ground here at Warala Drive. So he's got the ball, usually uses it pretty well. He's play on now, he's in trouble. He's in a lot of trouble. So he's just coughed up the footy. That was terrible play there. No awareness at all as Ricky Johnson's got a couple to beat here. He's in trouble. Gave it off. Van Oonen, right foot bender around the corner. Kicked it. <laughs> terrible play there by Withers in the middle of the ground. Caused the turnover and an easy goal to Mount Eliza. Not what Lang Warren wanted at the 16 and a half minute mark of the third quarter. That really, really hurts, doesn't it? Just exposed his defenders, didn't he? Just too isolated, too much space. And, uh, yeah, an absolute howler in the middle there, middle of the ground. A low-scoring game to concede a goal like that. It's seven goals to four, and it really um, it, it, it makes it especially tough. Like, even at this stage, the way the way the game's been played. Like, Mount Eliza, 11 inside 50s to four. The game's not over, but the way the stats are going, it's going gonna, it's gonna to end up an avalanche by three-quarter time. So they're just going to hang on now, the Kangaroos. We've played 17 and a half minutes. They're just dominating the clearances at the moment, getting the ball out. Capkin's got a lot to do with it too. Since going in the ruck, he's done well. Uh, Withers again, the ball uh, spilled out of his hands. Comes out there towards Landry, who's been dominant. Kicks the ball inside 50 again. Lockwood versus Hamill. Hamill at the back, was able to force the spoil. Then under all sorts of pressure here now. Eames gives the ball out. Withers, he holds the ball up. Got one around the chops. Umpire said play off. On. Sinkowitz taps the ball down. Landry at the fore of the ball. Comes out now to uh, Barton who kicked it inside. There he is again, Capkin. He's starting to dominate. Kicks the ball to the outer side. But Ricky Johnson dropped what he should have taken. Forced off the ball. Van Oonen falls over. Right snap. Boundary line. Can you believe it? What a goal by Van Oonen. Ricky Johnson lost his feet. Van Oonen gathered up against the boundary line and right foot bananaed it through. Isn't it amazing, you know, you got a you got a forward who's been really well held by Johnson pretty much for the whole the whole afternoon and then in in a space of five minutes he's just turned this game on its head. Two quick goals and uh just got a few party tricks from the in front of the gallery. He has, and he's just looking back at the Lang Warren coaches box too. So I think they're giving it to him in there. But uh, Gav wouldn't be saying anything to him. Oh right? yes, he would. You could guarantee <laughs> he'd be telling him plenty. But Van Oonen's the one who's kicked two goals in two minutes and turned this game on its head. We're out to 23 points, the biggest lead for the match. Can the Kangaroos respond? They need to. Michael Parker kicked the ball inside 50 for Lang Warren. A big push in the back came there against Brody Shaw. The umpire said no. Ethan Raleigh's got about three to beat. Handball out. To Did, didn't they? Gets the grain a little bit, so that's um yeah, one back. They need to uh need a few more of those though, mate, just to make it interesting now. Five goals, eleven forty one. They trail back to a seventeen points. We've played twenty minutes into the third quarter. Well see, no. how has that numbers looking? Um 13 inside fifties to five this quarter. Michael Parker's actually had five this quarter for Lang Warren. Heasley's only had a couple, but he's had 17 for the game, and Darren Booth's had 11 for the game, and uh, I'm just wondering how strong this wind is, because neither side have taken full advantage, but Lang Warren will have it in the last quarter. Yeah, it's pretty strong. It's very, very strong, I suspect, because uh, even the, when the umpire threw the ball back up on that occasion, Vossi, it blew to the end in which man lies are kicking, and uh, if you can, uh, if you just look at the uh, the dust coming as well, Vossi, mm. it's pretty strong down here as Luke Churcher kicks the ball up the line for Lang Warren. They need another goal, but for three quarter time, taking the mark there is Herdman. He either got the mark or the free kick. Our poor cameraman, he's copping a pasting out there. Herdman's been pretty good, Tully. He has. 
He's been, uh, hasn't been their worst, uh, certainly started to get amongst it in that second quarter. But he's got the ball about 50 metres out from goal. Jared Brown has been under the pump in this quarter. He kicks it up and under. I'm not sure if that helped anybody, certainly from a Lang Warren perspective. And taking an easy mark there was Booth. Plays on him, it was Gill in fact. Gave it out there towards Barton. Barton, another sweeping handball. Found his teammate there in... In, uh, it was Jimmy Clayton, David Willett's got it now at half back, goes up the line, they need to, somebody over the back, Mandalizer uh, haven't got the numbers there, Ethan Raleigh got forced off the footy, was able to pick it up, Peach is in trouble, cops won a little bit around the chops, and the umpire said it's a free kick. Good play, good so play by Lang Warren, just, just going back on that entry, just a nothing kick wasn't it? It know? was, Nick Hamill's got the footy now, geez this needs to be uh, good, and it is on this occasion to Churcher. So they've switched play Lang Warren from the member side to the outer side, but they maintain possession of the footy. Jared Amalfi working hard to the outer side of the ground. They've got themselves into trouble again, though, only momentarily as Peach takes the mark. Kicks it out wide, looking for Ricky Johnson. They're just trapped out here at the moment, Lang Warren. That's a lovely kick over the back, and good enough to take the mark is Ryan Smith. He's got his teammate there in... Uh, in Eames, who's got the ball now, wing position. Lang Warren just starting to get their hands on the footy again. Goes up towards Jared Brown, who's at the fall of the ball. Sinkowitz gets a handball out. By Gill, forced him off the footy. Jimmy Clayton got mauled. Probably should have got a free kick. Snap around the corner. Comes down to Sinkowitz now. Kicks the ball long. Amalfi's got a couple to beat. Ball hits the deck. Durazio's there. Good play there by Amalfi. Tried to tap the ball back. Cole was there to support. Herdman picks it up. What can he do? Runs around. Dropped the footy. Terrific tackle. And a turnover now. As Booth gives it off towards Cole. Kicks the ball up towards the wing position. Out of sight of the ground. Sam Wett. Hall up against Churcher, foot race, who can win it? It's picked up there by Wettenhall, squares the ball up to the centre of the ground and Benny Lean takes the mark. Plays on immediately, goes inside 50, Lockwood couldn't take the mark, Van Ernan's given Johnson the slip, picks it up now Van Ernan, right foot snap around the corner, hits the woodwork, through for a minor score. Certainly been busy this quarter hasn't he, is uh, Van Nguyen, he's just a beneficiary of the just constant repeat entries from Mandalorza. Eight goals, 11-59, ball goes over the back, Harkness has got to pick it up, he does, kicks the ball long, out towards Raleigh, he's out positioned, easy mark taken there by the very experienced Jimmy Clayton, plays on, comes out wide looking for Nathan Ryan who takes the mark, half back line for Man Eliza, member side, goes up towards Willett, punched forward, that was bad there by Moore. Picked up by Withers, he's in all sorts of trouble. Could have got one in the back. They need to uh, work the ball out. Man, they've got plenty of numbers around the footy. They're inside 50 now. Parker's got the footy. Willett hangs on to him. Good play by the youngster there in Ryan again. Jaden Gross, free kick going Man, Liza's way. And it's going to go down there too. Is it Zach White or is it Nathan Ryan? It might be White, but just, just there hasn't a game gone up a notch. It has, Zach. Uh, Zach yeah. White's got the footy too far out to score. Drops it to the square over the back. Van Oonen, where is he? He's got the ball now. Right foot snap. Through for a point. Jeez, the ball in his area now. He looks dangerous every time it goes anywhere near him. Certainly got his mojo going this quarter, hasn't he? Andrew Withers to struggle with the pace of the game a little bit this quarter. Agreed on that one, Vossi. He's been caught a number of times. And uh, the defensive pressure in their forward half, man, Liza, has been exceptional. The, ump, the runner's going out to uh, Andrew Withers now, so I'd imagine that's one coming from uh, Gavin Artico asking for a little bit more urgency when he's going near that football. So Churchill will bring the ball back into play for Lang Warren. He does. Kicks it out wide. Norton tried to go for the bang over the back. Harkness, he's been good this afternoon. Handball out to Luxa. Back to Harkness. He's in trouble, though. Fell over. It was actually Luxa. Fortunately, he fell over because he would have got his head ripped off and been tackled. Ball comes to Parker. He'll always look for that left foot. Goes backwards. Smythe, what can he do? Oh, it sold some candy. Was nice. At half back. Kicked it up the line. Was a terrific kick. Found... Patterson. Patterson goes inside. Jared Brown hasn't seen much of it in this third quarter. Lang Warren would love another one before three quarter time. A nice kick just lowered the eyes and found Jaden Gross, who's got the ball too far out to score at that end of the ground. Good transition there, wasn't it? So he's you alluded to before, Toe. He hasn't had a great day, Jaden Gross, but this can certainly get his day going. It's an important kick for his footy club. So, uh, missed the last couple, I think, grows back into the side today. Just starting to find the footy now. Kicks.
all along. It's not going to get the journey. Where's Jared Brown? Couldn't take the mark. Man, Lies, I want to kill the contest. They eventually do. They plow it immediately. And that was through uh, Rowan Heasley. But the umpire said come back through for a minor score. So it's five goals, 12-42. Back to uh, 18 points, the difference, to 8-12-60. Shane Patterson's up to 17, by the way, boys. He's been good, no doubt about it. Ball comes in, that's done. Kicks the ball to the outer side. Willer takes an easy, uncontested mark. Just trying to slow play down. Goes in short, looking for Booth. Booth takes the mark now at half back. Member side of the ground, goes up the line. Ricky Johnson versus, uh, he's, he's, oh, he got smashed there. Uh, Scotty Lockwood uh, gave Andrew Withers one. And he's lucky, uh, he's lucky that he had his back to uh, the umpire on that occasion. Withers was looking for a 50 metre penalty. He had justification to ask for it. Gives it back to Johnson, who's got the ball at half back. Member side of the ground, goes up towards Norton territory. Booth couldn't take the mark, the ball spills out. Trying to pick the ball up there is Bulldog. He might've got one across the chops, did he? Jared Amalfi was in there as well. And a, uh, a Langwarren free kick. <coughs> He'll go to Travis Bulldog, put his head over the footy. For the Kangaroos, he kicks the ball long inside 50, looking for Brown coming out, couldn't take the mark, for the ball, where's Herbman? Good play there from the defenders again as Sam Gill kicks the ball up towards uh, inside 50, got a couple to beat Johnson, Van Oonen for the ball, ducked, got a handball out, that was a terrific little handball! They weren't able to convert the opportunity. And it was Sam Wettenhall who had the flying shot at goal through for a minor score. So the Kangaroos can breathe easy again. Eight goals, 13 to five goals, 12 back to 19 points. The difference, we've played 27 minutes in the third quarter. Once again, two man of Ford's flying together. You know, competing at the same at the same contest. You know, let's uh, get some communication going, lads. Luke Churchill kicks the ball in. They need to create a contest. The ball's taken there by Blake Arctus. Plays on immediately. Goes up the line. Was a nice looking kick. Found his teammate over there. Goes uh, to Golby. Golby a handball to Jaden Gross. The ball slipped through his hands. He was able to lay a tackle though on Booth. And the umpire said, "Yes, you're a little bit too vicious with your attack on the footy." Yeah, Ends up with, out on the fly with Heasley. Heasley now kicks. Plenty of run at the moment, Mount Eliza. Got the momentum. It's amazing what it can do. So he's done it. He's a uh, shocking play there by Jared Amalfi. He's decked his teammate, uh, his opponent rather, in Nathan Ryan after he got rid of the footy. And uh, the siren's gone. As there, the siren's gone. Is there a free kick? No. I thought there might have been a free kick down the ground, but there yeah, wasn't. I thought that too. The umpire was throwing his hands in the air saying it was... Uh, it was the end of the quarter, so a three-quarter time. Man, Liza, eight goals, 13-61, leading Lang Warren, 5-12-42. You're listening to RPP, the voice of Peninsula Football. This is defence, get some entry in there early, and big fella can pluck a couple. So the sirens go on to start the uh, final quarter. O'Neill, good play there by Sinkowitz. He was held onto in the middle of the ground. He was able to lay the tackle. Good play, Heasley found, done at half back. A spiralling punt goes towards the outer wing position. Ben Lean leads in the race for the footy man. Liza with their numbers there. Little was one of them. But Smythe was able to see the ball over the line and out of bounds. Just needed to get an entry, didn't they? Then, um, sorry, Lang Warren, they got the clearance, but then, uh, yeah, unfortunately turned the footy over at half back. So the ball comes back into play again. Luke O'Neill is able to tap the ball forward. Good play there by... Uh, Barton gave a handball off, working the ball nicely there. Little's got the footy for Mount Eliza, kicks it into the centre of the ground. There's Harkness again, is able to kick the ball. You'd fancy Darren Booth in this situation. Never ever loses his feet. Gives a handball out somehow, gives it off to Gill. Gill's got the footy. Gave him the benefit of the doubt. Peach kicks the ball towards the centre of the ground and lacks a fortune. 
Gives it falls into the hands of Michael Parker. Dangerous kick, wasn't it? It was. Parker kicks the ball up the line. Looking for Brown. Took a nice mark. Kicks the ball inside 50 now. Durazio up against the big fella in Norton. This is where Durazio will have him covered. Ball hits the deck. Picks it up comfortably. He's got some support inside. Gives it there to the big fella. Ruckman in little. Another sweeping handball there to Durazio. Defensive 50 out of side of the ground. Kicks it up the line. They go for the mark. Nobody can take it. Good pass. Punch from behind from O'Neill. Fell down to Smythe. Smythe kicked it up towards the 50 metre line for Lang Warren out of side. And Bulldog takes the mark. Kicks the ball inside 50. A terrible kick. Allowed Booth to come charging out. Sweeping handball now to Heasley. Back to Booth through the middle of the ground. Dances around Jaden Gross. Kicks the ball inside 50. Out comes Van Unen. And somebody needed to chip in for Lang Warren and it was Luke Churcher. Did well there. Yeah, it was hot footy. And uh, Van Anden looks up to the bench. He's all right, though. That's good news there for the Mounties because he hit the deck. Picked up there by Blair Wheel and out of side of the ground. Up the line. Finds his teammate there in Dave Willett. So Willett's too far out to score. Inside 50. Chip inside the hole. Hamill came out. So did Lockwood. Ball at the fall of ball. Lockwood's got it now. Hamill laid the tackle. Little handball give was terrific. Back to Willett. Kicks it up towards the goal square. Going back gross. Needs some support. Harkness has got a mark. There's two on him. He was able to bring the ball to ground. Kicking the ball off the deck there was Wet and Hall. And the ball goes over the line out of bounds. Not a bad result that for Lang Ryan. It was a two on one. But just going, just going back that last entry um it's one thing to have the big fella up there to stretch them but they've got to make sure they've got they can't allow man to get that extra number around the contest dave barton a little handball in came inside church has got a couple to beat kicks the ball up the line wasn't a great kick taking an uncontested mark was nathan ryan handballed it backwards to little little gave it to heasley back to little kick inside up towards half forward willett's caused some problems so dave willett's got the ball now at half forward He's got plenty of players inside. He's telling him he's going long. I reckon he's going to go short. He's looking for a small one. There it is. It was uh, as plain as the nose on my face that he was going to go short. When as soon as he top pointed that he was going to go long. He called it. And chipping in and taping in the mark there was Ben Lean. See, it's not surprising for us that they've gone short. They were doing that a lot in the third quarter. You know, they were, again, uh, Lang Warren Footy Club were just going towards Van Nguyen, thinking the ball was going to get channeled there. And... Look out, the short one comes. Ben Lean, the thumping kick of the footy. Left foot up, will kick from 50. Set sail now. The ball is going straight through. No, it drifted at the last minute. There was a bit of premature celebration going on from Ben Lean. That swung by about two-thirds of the goal width there. That swung a long way in the air. It did. So the ball through for a minor score. We saw Ricky Johnson booting 70-metre balls from this very position in the second quarter. Jared Amelfi is also a long kick of the footy. Uses all of the square. Kicks it up there towards half back. But then once again, Rowan Heasley at the fall of the ball for the mound. He kicks it inside 50. Andrew Withers wrapped up as soon as he got hold of it. The umpire said play on. He could have been holding the footy. Jaden Gross is wrapped up. And the umpire will come in and bounce half forward for the Mount Eliza Footy Club. And on the Roy Hotel scoreboard, they lead eight goals, 14-62. To Langwaran, 5-12-42. Need a goal, Lang Warren. They need to get something from this stoppage at half back. Transition quickly and get a score on the board. So the ball comes out now. It's exactly what they want. It goes out towards the wing position, but Dunn leads Herdman in the race for the foot. He goes inside. The umpire's found a free kick. It's going back to Dunn. He got pushed as he kicked the footy. Could have been down the ground. Dunn goes in short once again. Landry takes the mark. Has been sensational for the Red Legs this afternoon. One of their best, in fact. Just needs to be careful there, Jaden Gross was a little late there, might be a little bit frustrated himself, he's got to keep his head. Push in the back, the umpire said there was nothing in there, Ricky Johnson goes back with a fly to the ball, kicked off the ground, they need some numbers, Churcher picks it up, he's got plenty of pressure on, just went up the line hoping for the boundary line, and it was a good result for the Kangaroos, as the ball spills over the line out of bounds and they're able to restart play. Swinging the changes here, the uh, Lang Warren Footy Club. Just trying to get some different uh, different mixes in there to generate something. So Little taps the ball, but at the back of the pack there again, once again, Great was uh, Nathan Ryan. There's a free kick. It's going Lang Warren's way. So Jaden Gross was able to lay that tackle and get the free kick. He's got the ball at half back. He's got to go to the outer side of the ground. It's a terrible kick. Boosts in the box seat to take an easy mark, and he does.
Yeah, wouldn't so be happy with that. It's a yeah, season campaigner. Wrong decision, wrong spot on the ground. Jimmy Clayton kicks the ball up towards the 50-metre line. Good play there by uh, Scotty Lockwood. The umpire said he nudged his opponent under the footy. And Andrew Withers will take the result and free kick defensive 50. So they need to be... Cl Cleaner with the ball out of their defensive zone. Now Lang Warren. Lux has got the ball at half back. He's going to go short again to Parker. Needs to be good. Parker dropped what he should have taken. Man lies a swarm on him. Parker goes after it again. Overran it. Plenty of numbers around the footy. Heasley. He was one of them. That was a terrific little handball out. One to Lean. Lean gave it off there to Cole. Cole for Man Liza. Kicks it inside 50 now. Out comes Van Unen. What can he do? He allowed Cole to pick the ball up. Running with the fly to the footy. And eventually. Eventually it's taken there in the last line of defence by Andrew Withers for Lang Warren. Good. Get it out the other side, bit more space out there. He kicks the ball out wide, it wasn't a great kick but it found Amelfi. Amelfi goes short looking for Luxa. So Luxa's got the ball now, defensive 50. Need to get the ball inside, comes up towards Jared Brown, needed to take that mark, didn't. He's alright at ground level though, it's spilled over to Weems who grabs the ball, he's got to kick it now, he runs to 50, kicks the ball up there towards Colby. Colby, can he trap it before it goes through for a bind? No he can't. It's just not the meant, meant to be there day boys, that one. Yeah, just wasted opportunity there. So they move to five goals, a 13-43. Mount Eliza, eight goals, 14-62. Rob Durazio plays on. We've played seven and a half minutes in this final quarter. The ball goes over the back at ground level. Who's there? It's Lang Warren's uh, Dylan Lux who puts his head over the foot. He's besieged to ponder. The umpire said he's got a free kick for one high. I'm not sure about that one. Goes in short to Peach in the centre of the ground. Wants to play on. Kicks the ball in towards Herdman. Comes out and took a nice mark out in front of his eyes. Strong lead, strong mark. Great kick. Great kick. Should uh, go back. He shouldn't have any trouble with the journey here. He'll kick from about 40 directly in front. Sean Herdman hasn't kicked a goal this afternoon. Comes in now, Sean Herdman has a shot for goal and the umpire watches it go over her head, his head, I'm not sure but it's a goal. Six I'm goals, 13-49 to 8-14-62, that's on the Rye Hotel scoreboard. We've got another kick here, Toey. They've got, got another a, kick? They've got another kick here, I reckon, have they? So is that goal registered? They've waved it and they haven't sit there, the, the umpires are marking it down. So what's going on here, gentlemen? I reckon there's been another free kick. Who's that with the footy there? That's Herbman again. Again. Different spot on the ground though. That's Herbman. Who's uh, going for his second shot. And I reckon he's kicked two goals in five seconds, has he? I reckon he has too. They're margin seven points, Tully. So, uh, Sean Herbman, we're not sure what the hell has happened on that occasion, but he's just kicked two goals. He must have got dealt with after he kicked the goal. Must have. Or, or something's happened behind the goals and someone's booted a into the car park maybe I'm not sure that that can that can make a, an umpire pay another free kick and get another shot on goal but oh, look I'm not sure so uh, let's wait for uh, the scoreboard because uh, we think that uh, Lang Warren have just kicked two goals in a row so we're just waiting for that scoreboard as they go up in the centre of the ground again all of a sudden there's a free kick and it's going to Mandalizer the umpire calls the advantage and that's to Dave Barton kicks the ball inside 50 now out comes Van Unen he's in front Jumps right, jumps left. That's a terrific kick of the footy. Gee, that was clever there by Justin Van Unen. Could have sprayed the kick. Could have gone for the big the big boot around the corner. But he just lowered his eyes, saw somebody at the corner. And it was his teammate there in the forward line in Scott Lockwood. That's why you get paid the big bucks, Tully, to do the special things like that. So, um, need a good... Yeah, quick response. And there's, play, the, there's the evener up there as Scotty Lockwood kicks the goal on the margin. Goes back out to 13 points. Nine goals, 14, a 68 to 7, 13, 55. That's on the Rye Hotel scoreboard. Darren Booth's had four this quarter for 16, and Rowan Heasley's at 21 possessions for the game, boys. Love to know what caused that Lang Warren back to back goal. If someone's uh, someone's at the ground who knows what's happened or have seen something, feel free to come past the van and let us know. the question, though. He's kicked two goals, but if, if he was dealt with, wouldn't you have thought they would have paid the second one right at the top of the goal square? Yeah, not sure. But Scotty Lockwood's kicked his first goal for the afternoon, boys. So uh, an important time for him to get on the board. Nine goals, 14, 68. That's their first goal. Man Liza to that end of the ground. 7, 13, 55. It's 13 points the difference. Can Lang Warren respond here? 
Peach in the centre of the ground gets it. Golby, he got uh, dealt with. Good play there by Churcher. He tries to pick the footy up. Shane Patterson over the head over the footy. Picked up there by Jimmy, Cam uh, Jimmy Clayton. He got driven into the ground. The umpire said there was no free kick there. And the umpire will come in and bounce the ball. It wasn't Clayton, in fact. It was Zach White who got ridden into the ground. Ball comes out towards Peach again. Peach goes up the line looking for Reams. Good play there by Darren Booth. Just killed that contest. Jeez, he rarely loses a one-on-one, -on -one, Darren Booth. That's an impact sport right there, isn't it? He's just a sensational footballer. No doubt about that as Landry comes on. Heasley off two of their best this afternoon as Landry gets the footy. Left foot kick up the line. It's not going to uh, beat the boundary line, though. It goes over. So Lang Warren will be over to restart here. They trail by 13 points. Seven goals, 13.55. Man lies at 9, 14, 68. We've played 12 minutes into the final term. There it is again. Withers gets the ball smothered. Picked up there by... And Melfi kicks the ball long. Jared Brown's got a couple to beat. Almost pulled it out in with the one hand. Good play there by Landry again. Gave it to Lean. Lean gave it to Barton. Barton a sweeping handball to Dunn. And they go into attack again. The Mounties through Lockwood, who came out strongly and took a terrific mark. Having an influence, isn't he? Just build his, uh, building the game as the game goes on. So Lockwood's too far out to score. He's 50 metres out. He'll plant the ball to the top of the square. Van Oonen comes out now. Good third man up for the ball. Manalizer with the numbers. Picks up. Right foot snap. That's Van Oonen around the corner. Through for a minor score. Jeez, he's missed a few today, hasn't he, too? You know, he he's, got, he's got a couple of goals, but um, yeah, if he kicked straight, it could have been a big day. Had many set shots. Oh, he's basically been having the, the snaps at goal. Yeah, half chances. He did right, Bossy. So they bring the ball back into play once again. Lang Warren and Melfi's goal. The ball goes over Melfi's head. He's not the quickest either, so uh, he runs through. There's a free kick, and it's going against uh, Eames there. So Eames has just come back from suspension. I don't think there was much in that, but uh, he's got the ball. Uh, That's Dave Barden, I think, on the ground. It is. So uh, he was poleaxed, and uh, I guess the fact that it didn't suggest to me that uh, they didn't see anything overly wrong with a bit blindsided I think opened himself up and uh, just waiting for the action replay he so did yeah it'd be nice wouldn't it be very <laughs> nice so nine goals 15 69 man Eliza as Dave Barton is in the hands of the trainers in the middle of the ground he's been sensational today Barton what a man he's best 14 points the difference as uh, both teams continue to pull the changes and uh, Barton won't take the free kick I think he'll be brought off the ground uh, he's got a bit of a headache I reckon so Benny Lean's got the ball in the centre of the ground for Manalyza we've played 14 minutes so plenty of time on happening here he's in no man's land at the moment Dave Barton but great to see him up on his feet now and he'll be brought off the ground so uh, out of the players that uh, Mount Liza were going to... Uh, he's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, he is. He's pretty sore there, I think, mate. He's... Uh, he doesn't want the support of the trainers to come off the ground, but, uh, yeah, he's in a... Uh, he's not in a great way there, Dave Barton. If he doesn't have the trainers help, he'll end up in Frankston, I reckon. He's in, he's in a world of trouble at the moment. Just to, He needs the help to get off the ground. He does. But good to see him uh, walking, boys. Uh, it's always uh, it's always comforting to see that. So they'll just wait for him to come off the ground. And Rowan Heasley ready to come back on. We've played 15 minutes, so uh, the clock probably would have stopped at 13 minutes. And uh, he'll, have a, he'll have a sore head for a while tonight. I reckon Dave Barton, he's been sensational today. As the sun comes creeping out again, it's magnificent, isn't it? As Benny Lean's got the ball for Mount Liza in the centre of the ground. Kicks the ball up towards the 50 metre line. They all come charging out. Who's at the fall of the ball? Lux is able to uh, hold the ball up. Mount Liza with plenty of numbers. Right foot snap around the corner. They all come out. But Lang Warren have got the numbers there. And the mark is taken in the defensive half. Goes up towards a Melfi. He had to stretch for Lang Warren. He took the mark. Comes out towards the outer side of the ground. Drop what he should have taken. Church, he's in some trouble now. Good play there by Darren Booth to wrap him up. I'm not sure he had an opportunity to get rid of the footy up, but it was wonderful work there by Darren Booth, who's been superb all afternoon. Plays on immediately. Kicks it out there towards Lockwood, who flew. Couldn't take the mark. For the ball, Gill standing there on his own. Sammy Gill runs into open goal and sprays it across the face. 
So through for a minor score. Nine goals, 16-70. They lead Lang Warren by 15 points. Seven goals, 13-55. Just taking chances in front of goal, both sides, Tully. You know, it's uh, it's one of the things that um, even, at, even at the top level, the elite level, they struggle with. But, yeah, just taking chances, guys. So Lang Warren go to the outer side. It wasn't a great kick. Could have got one in the back there. Blair Wheel and the umpire said no. Once again, Mandalizer with more numbers around the footy. Jaden Gross laid the tackle. Somehow it spills out again to the big fella in little. A sweeping handball. Right foot snap around the corner. Standing there and taking the mark again. His Eames. Parker's just coming on the ground. He's on the wing here. So Jared Amalfi's got the footy now. Parker wants it. Jared Amalfi couldn't get around his man quick enough. Goes in towards Eames. Terrible kick again. The overlap. Good tackle there. He's got players in support. This time it's Lean. He unloads from 50. Ben Lean! Kicks the goal! First now into the coffin of Lang Warren. 10 goals, 16-76. Lang Warren, seven goals, 13.55. You're listening to RPP, the voice of Peninsula football. Hi, I'm Jack, and my dad's Pete from the Mornington and Rosemont Telstra stores. This year's winners of the Telstra Licensee of the Year Award. My dad has been really busy lately, but he and the team have been recognised for their customer service excellence. And you really need to get in store and experience it for yourself. So drop in and see the Telstra Licensee of the Year team at the Telstra store in Mornington or Rosebud. Or call us on 1300 My Telstra. And in the meantime, I'm off to go kick the footy with Dad. Well done, Dad. Thanks, on son. The station sponsor. And Mount Lies are doing it beautifully now. 10 goals, 16, 76. Lang Warren, 7, 13, 55. Inside 50s in this final quarter, Vossi. 11 to 3 in favour of Mount Eliza. Yeah, it, uh, their attack on the footy has just been better than Lang Warren's in this quarter as the ball goes forward. Um, Herdman hasn't done a lot this afternoon. Comes out there towards uh, Sam Gill. He's got some players in support. Great play there by Dunn. Herdman got led off the footy. Picked up the footy now. It's uh, the Kangas kick it towards the uh, goal line. Comes out towards Jared Brown. He couldn't get it. Peach, a little right foot snap. Rolls across the face of the goal through for a minor score. I mean, uh, out of bounds on the uh, right forward pocket for the Kangaroos. They trail by 21 points. Just had a score from uh, the Rosebud Somerville game. Rosebud's got the got the win there by two goals. They've won. They've won. That's final score. Okay, so two goal victory there for Rosebud over the Eagles. It's been a big week for the Somerville Football Club. As Corey Hanger comes off the ground, Luke O'Neill comes back onto the ground. Left forward pocket. We are at Langwine. They need to kick one. We've played 18 and a half minutes. They need some quick goals, the Kangaroos. Can't play safe here. They've got to play on at all costs, haven't they? They've just got to try and win the game. They do. Good play there by Little. He's been just terrific today, along with uh, Jordan Capkin, who had a significant role to play in that third quarter. Dave Willett was held without the footy. Should have got a free kick. The umpire said no. The ball's at half forward for Lang Warren. Trying to spill the ball out. The umpire let it go, which was terrific umpiring. And eventually the umpire comes in and bounce now. So Luke O'Neill, big swat. Man Lizer again with numbers around the footy. Jaden Gross picks it up. Right foot snap, kicks it towards the top of the square. Gill versus Brown. Brown had front position. Dunn comes in to support. Gets tackled there by, by Brown. The umpire was uh, trying to be talked into giving a, a free kick away in favour of Lang Warren, but opted for... Good second effort by Brown. A stop ball, it was. Good play there by Norton. Got a handball out. Didn't get pinged for holding the ball. Kicked out of the troubled zone there by Shaw for Mandalizer. Comes to Raleigh. Raleigh handballs there towards um, Withers. But the commitment level of Mandalizer at the moment is there, and that's why they're being rewarded by the umpire. Just been there all second half, haven't they? They have. They've been red hot, Mandalizer. They've just come out and uh, really flexed the muscles on the game. Rowan Heasley kicks the ball out wide. Only as far there as Michael Parker, who's got the footy now, though. Goes in short. Wasn't a great kick. Their forward uh, entries at the moment have been terrible. Good smother there by Raleigh, but Little was good enough to uh, to get it back. Gives it to Jimmy Clayton, who kicked the ball out to the outer wing, and Manalizer around here. Picked up by Landry again. Kicks the ball up towards half forward. There's Lockwood again. Wants to play on. Gets around onto the right foot. Little chip inside to Van Oonen was terrific. His vertical leap was wonderful. He couldn't take the mark. for the ball. Right foot snap. Kicks towards Capcom. Couldn't take the mark. At the fall the ball. Smythe, he's got a couple to beat. Picked up by Eames. Tucks the ball under his arm. He's in all sorts of trouble. Somehow got out of it. Kicks the ball up towards centre half forward. Peach got forced under it there by Clayton. Couldn't take the mark. Going in there is Ethan Raleigh. 
Diving on top of it there was Peach again. Comes out to Parker. Eames, he got one around the chop. Bulldog, he lays the tackle to Jimmy Clayton. Was a great tackle, but the ball was held to him. He had no chance to get it out. And the umpire will come in and bounce. Great tackle. Great pressure from Man, uh, from Lang Warren there. But uh, he looked like they just need to conjure some goals and quickly. So the ball comes in. Good play. Man, Liza again. They've got plenty of numbers at the back. Jimmy Clayton handballed it and hope. Michael Parker dives on top of the footy. They dive on top of him. And the umpire will come in and bounce again. 50 metres out from Lang Warren's goal. Directly in front. They trail by 21 points. We've played 21 and a half minutes in this final quarter. Crowd start getting right into it here, Tully. They are yelling out dog. And uh, the ball stalemate once again. Landry attacked the footy, but it's held up. And uh, the umpire will throw the ball back up again. 50 metres out from Lang Warren's goal. They've got to kick one. They've got... They've uh, kicked two in this quarter, but Mount Eliza have answered every single challenge as Capkin gives a handball out to Jack Cole. He's got the ball on a string out there. He kicks the ball up towards Van Uden, dived high, couldn't take the mark. Get the four on the ball. Lang Warren dive on top of it. Van Uden keeps his feet still going. Van Uden, Ricky Johnson with an important kick off the ground. Kicks it towards the defensive 50. Smythe gets it and tries to go. Good play there by Capkin to tackle him. And the ball eventually spills over the boundary line out of bounds. Half forward for the Mounties. They're home. Just a lot of space, haven't they? When they transition the footy from half back to go forward, there's just so much space. The game's really opened up, but Lang Warren just can't get that same space and that opportunity. Good play there by O'Neill. He got the hand ball out. Michael Parker's got the footy now. Goes in short. Needs to be a good kick. It is there to Jared Brown. So he's got the ball at half forward for the quick Kangaroos. Out, he's got no out. one to go to. Plenty of numbers back for Mount Eliza. It's three on one. If the big fella doesn't mark it, he's, uh, they're in trouble here, Lang Warren. But uh, Durazio and Darren Booth see the ball over the line and through for a minor score, which allows them to set up once again. Just obviously, like you alluded to, Mount Eliza pushed a lot of numbers back, but they just had to be more numbers in there from Lang Warren or, or move the footy sideways. Jerry Brown from the centre of the ground just open up another hole inside 50, but just need to be quicker there. Happy to just play the possession footy at the moment, the Mounties, as Durazio kicks the ball up the line towards the wing position. The ball spills to the front. Ethan Raleigh. Jaden Gross got one in the back. Look at the Mount Eliza numbers around the footy, boys. That's the yeah, commitment that we've seen in this second half. Huge momentum for Mount Eliza in the second half, and they're just really capitalising on that. So up they go again. Little, he's just battled all day, hasn't he? So has Luke O'Neill, though. He's been terrific. Sinkowitz just missed his target there in Jaden Gross, and that's been the difference between the uh, between the sides. Got Jordan captain as well in the in the second half. Tell you, he's he been superb. Yeah, absolutely. So the balls are. Uh, Still at half forward for Lang Warren. Plenty of numbers around the footy. Mount Liza will just be happy for stoppage after stoppage, preventing Lang Warren from scoring. Somehow, though, they've always been able to handball that ball out wide and have somebody run onto it as it goes towards the centre of the ground. Great pick up there by Wettenhall. Not sure how he got that one, but there's Lockwood again. Hasn't he carved it up in the second half, gentlemen? As he's got the ball at half forward, that is a wonderful kick. Uh, it wasn't so wonderful. I didn't see that Lang Warren player chip in and take the mark. As it comes out to Patterson, look at the numbers here again. Four man Liza kicks the ball up the line. Jaden Gross looks like he's running on the spot. Picked up there by Sinkowitz. He got tackled. Good defensive pressure there from Nathan Ryan. Sinkowitz goes again. The umpire has found a free kick. No. He just That that um, contest there was just symbolises the second half. He had a man Eliza bloke coming in 15 metres behind the two Lang Ryan guys and just burnt past. Didn't take the footy with him but just showed just man Eliza are full of running at the moment. They are as the ball hits the deck again. Here's Landry again. It's going to have to be a good player to beat him for best on ground today. It's a good play there by Strickland. Kicks the ball inside. Dave Willard hasn't done a lot wrong today either. Mounty's uh, performance across the board has been fantastic as the ball's held up once again and the umpire will come in and bounce. Member side of the ground, half forward for the Mounties. They lead on the Rye Hotel scoreboard 10 16 76 to 7 14 56. 25 and a half gone now. Time's ball comes out. Oh, there's a terrific mark again by the big fella in Little. He's been good today, the big fella, against two bigger ruckmen. But he's had the versatility around the ground to cause a little bit of damage. And just when he needs a chop out, as Brent Clinic said, Jordan Capkin's able to come in and lay some uh, some support. As the ball hits the deck again, comes there towards Ben Lean, carved him up, bang, misses. Goal. Goal. Just kicked that. 
He has. That's terrific play, Ben Lean. That's goal number three for him. And uh, put you on your glasses, boys. 11 goals, 16-82 to 7-14-56. Yeah, Ben Lean's been really good. Eh? A couple of real shotgun goals in the last quarter, hasn't he? You know, that first one he kicked from, from good range. You know, he's just really loaded up on the left and, uh, yeah, put it through. What are the numbers like, Vossie? Uh, Mount Eliza are actually uh, really good numbers inside 50s. They've had 58 inside 50s for the game. So we've played 26 and a half minutes in this final quarter. And Mount Eliza have been superb in the second half. They were challenged in that second quarter and they've responded after half time. 11 16 82 to 7 14 56. Can Lang Warren get one back or can Mount Eliza just continue with the pressure? They've been fantastic as the ball goes towards Lockwood again. They're really starting to open them up. Lockwood left foot snap around the corner. Van Uden's got his name written all over. He doesn't have to worry about it though because it's a goal. Lockwood's kicked one. And that's the number two for Lockwood this afternoon. And he's dominated in this uh, second half. Bit of reward for Lockwood, hasn't he? 12 goals, 16.88 to 7.14.56. I think he's um he uh, he competed well in the first half, Toby, without getting a lot of reward. But just you know, it's funny the way footy works. Sometimes you work hard and you get reward in the second half, and he's been phenomenal. He has, and uh, reward for effort now, man. Liza, they're starting to hit the scoreboard. They've dominated general play. Little starting to jump all over the top of the bigger Lang Warren Ruckman. Wasn't the case in the second quarter. As the ball spills over the back, Luke Church has worked hard today for Lang Warren. Grabs the ball at half back. Kicks the ball up the line. Herbman just forced under the footy there from Dunn. And the ball goes over the line and out of bounds. So Manalizer, again, you look at that contest over there, gentlemen. It was three on one. So Manalizer just working so much harder for one another in this second half. Yeah, full of running. And it's been the difference between uh, the sides since half time. Uh, spot on, spot on, Tully. It's just a, they've uh, really put the foot down with work rate, and then Mandalay. Uh, sorry, Lang Warren haven't been able to respond. Nine goals to three after half time, gentlemen. Manalizer have dominated. We've played 28 minutes in the final quarter. Plenty of numbers around the footy, Langwine. Uh, Mount Eliza just forcing the ball forward again. Withers gets a handball out. Every time they get the footy, Langwine, though, in this second half, though, they're under all sorts of pressure. And Melfi, sweeping handball goes to Withers on the outer side of the ground. Just an up and under and a hope, and there's the siren. And the Mounties have done it easy. 13-16-88 have defeated Lang Warren. 7-14-56 on the Rye Hotel scoreboard. We'll go to a break and then we'll be back with the full-time wrap. You're listening to RPP, the voice of Peninsula football. Boss Sports are the Lawn Bowls specialist. Stockist of all Lawn Bowls products, including all men's and ladies' clothing. But did you know they also specialise in golf and tennis? at Shop 2, 1002 to 1004 Nepean Highway, Mornington. They have an indoor bowls green, a golf club fitting centre and driving range. They even have tennis nets so you can try before you buy. Boss Sports are the only stockist on the peninsula featuring the Nike Tiger Woods range. Call them now on 5976 4728. Boss Sports, a station sponsor. 98.7 The Locker Room covers all sports from all over the peninsula. Every Saturday morning from 10.30 till 12, find out what's happening locally from your sports station, RPPFM. 